I saw what you've been posting. Hitler was right. I didn't teach you that. You hide behind your screen, spewing all this hatred and ugliness. You got something you want to say? Get out of the truck and say it to their faces. Shalom. I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakak Badash. Double honor to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule well. Peace and salutations to the elect and much respect to the brothers pushing this word in the four winds of the earth. And Shalom to you, few sisters out there as well. It's Brother Ariyah coming at you with another lesson here. And you know, you saw those videos there, man. And this is what our Amalek is attempting to do is to make everyone, you know, feel sorry for them but they are the ones that have been doing most of the wickedness in the earth man you know and you know it's just uh it's funny to me man how everyone is, is back in this uh ridiculous movement here but uh, this is a uh, Sirach 12 and 10 and 11 and it says never trust thine enemy for like his iron rusteth so is his wickedness but we humble himself and go crouching yet take heed of take good heed of him and beware of him and thou shalt be unto him as if thou hast wiped a looking glass. And thou shalt know that his rust had not altogether been wiped away. All right? Now let me get 16 real quick. And it says, uh, Enemy speaketh sweetly with his lips, but in his heart he imagineth how to throw thee into a pit. And he will weep with his eyes, but if he find opportunity, he will not be satisfied with blood, man. You know, at the end of the day, you know, this is the enemy here, man. This is uh, Esau's grandson. <laughs> you know, Amalek is Esau's grandson, you know. So these people, you know, try to uh, and portray and, you know, to be us. And, you know, the, everyone is uh, pretty much eating it up, man. You know, but we know the truth, you know. We know who, who we are and we know who they aren't, you know. <laughs> Let me get uh, Sirach 19. Let's get 26 through 28. And it says, There's a wicked man that hangeth down his head sadly, but inwardly he is full of deceit, casting down his countenance and making as if he heard not. Where he is not known, he will do thee a mischief before thou be aware. Right? And that's what they do, man. They do most of their things uh, behind the scenes, man. Okay, you know, these people hide in plain sight, man. You know, that's probably what I'm going to name, uh, entitle this video, you know, the wicked hide in plain sight, man. And they're pretty much, you know, the hidden hand, you know, the ones that, uh, you know, have their hands in all, all sorts of, of uh, maliciousness and, and, and wickedness out here in the earth, man. But when, you know, their countenance, they try to act like, you know, they're harmless and they wouldn't hurt anyone. You know, but in reality, they do things that hurt everyone in their everyday lives, man, without uh, people being aware uh, of it, man. You know, that's the part of him being, uh, you know, conniving and, and deceitful, man. Right. Casting down his countenance and making as if he heard not where he 
is not known he will do thee a mischief before thou be aware. And if for want of power he be hindered from sinning, yet when he find an opportunity, he will do evil, man. Okay? And they're definitely working behind the scenes now to come against us, man. So they're looking for that opportunity to do evil against us because they see that, you know, more and more Israelites are waking up, man. You know, more and more Israelites are bringing out the truth, you know, as to who we are and as to who they are, man. And they do not like it at all, man, because we basically putting a monkey wrench in their plans, man. You know, so definitely, you know, there's going to be a, uh, a great insurrection against those that fear the Lord, man, soon come. So let's get Psalms 83. Let's get Psalms 83. Uh, let me see here. Man, some ugly ass shoes. What the hell is those? Uh, Psalms 83, 2 through 7. I hate when they put these ads up, man. It says, For lo, thine enemies make a tumult, and they that hate thee have lifted up the head. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones. They have said, Come and let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. For they have consulted together with one consent. They are confederate against thee, the tabernacles of Edom and the Ishmaelites and of Moab and the Hagarines, or the Hagar, yeah, Hagarines, Gabal and Ammon and Amalek, the Philistines with the inhabitants of Tyre, man. And these are just all the nations and there's more nations, but these are just some of the nations that are against us, man. Okay? And are seeking uh, to destroy us, man. But all the things that we see happening, you know, in our communities where we live at, you know, these things are, are, are done by all of these nations, man. Okay? Starting with Esau, Edom, and Amalek, man. You know? So let me get, uh, let me see here. Let's get Ephesians 6 and 12, man. Let's get Ephesians 6 and 12. And it says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places, man. Okay? And it's the Amalekites that, you know, they, they, they worship Satan, man, okay? They don't worship the Heavenly Father. They worship Satan, okay? They, they are uh, Satan worshipers, man, at the end of the day, right? And, you know, all all this is, is spiritual, man. You know, them principalities go, you know, back, you know, to those demons, man, okay? Those demons that they, they pray to and, and pray that the, de that the demons enter them, man, you know, to gain power. You know, this is why they do all types of, uh, you know, uh, you know, like, you know, they kill children, you know, sacrifices is the word I'm looking for. I hate when, you know, you're speaking and, you know, words escape you, but yeah, all types of sacrifices, blood sacrifices, you know, for power, man, you know, and it's the heavenly father that's allowing them to do that and, and giving them their power. But, you know, they don't have any understanding of that, man. You know, these people are, are, are crooked and perverse, you know, and soon to be taken down, man. You know, and what's crazy is, is that when the Israelites came out of uh, ex out of um, Egypt, you know, who was there to, to, to fight them? You know what I'm saying? The, the Amalekites, man. And it's going to be the same thing all over again in, the, in, this, sex, in this second exodus, man. You know, they're going to be right there fighting against us, man. You know, that's in... Uh, Exodus 17. I might get that. Matter of fact, let me get it now. Let's get sec, uh, Exodus 17. Uh, let's get 8. And it said, uh, yeah, I'm going to start here. It says, Then came Amalek and fought with Israel and Rephidim. And Moses said unto Joshua, Choose us out men and go out, fight with Amalek, Tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill with the rod of the heavenly father in my hand. So Joshua did as Moses had said to him and fought with Amalek. And Moses, Aaron, and Hur went up to the top of the hill. And it came to pass when Moses held up his hand that Israel prevailed. And when he let down his hand, 
Amalek prevailed. So Moses had to basically keep his, his hand up with the staff in it, man, you know, for Israel to prevail. But Moses' hands were heavy, and they took a stone and put it under him, and he sat thereon, and Aaron and Hur stayed up his hands, the one on, on the one side and the other on the other side. And his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. And Joshua discomfited Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword, man. Okay? And, you know, the next time is going to be Yahweh Shai and our brothers, uh, you know, coming down to do the, the very same thing to Amalek, man. You know? Because, you know, they, I'm telling you, they're going to, well, we already know, they're going to be putting up all types of, you know, ads against the, against the Israelites, demonizing us. You know, they're not really doing that now. They're doing it subtly. But soon, you know, it's going to be more uh, more noticeable, man. Okay? And, and more uh, straight to the point. You know, as far as showing brothers preaching on the streets. You know, these things are going to happen, man. You know, Amalek is going to seek to demonize us, man. All right? That's what they're going to do, man. And they're sitting here putting up these campaigns. And they want everyone to feel sorry for them. But little do all of these people know that are, are backing them and supporting them, that they're the one that, that's doing all this underhanded wickedness, man, in the backgrounds. But yet, in the in the view of, of people's eyes, uh, they seem they want to seem harmless, like they wouldn't hurt anyone, man. You know, but these are are, are the wickedest people on the earth, man. You know, let's get Sirach ten and five. Sirach 10 and 5, it says in the hand, let me see. Nope, that's not what I wanted. I wanted, uh, nope, that's not what I wanted. I wanted uh, Ecclesiastes 10 and 9, right? Because these people are super proud, man. Hold on. Salakia, I think it is 10 and 9. Right. And this is uh, my point, man, because these people are super proud. It says, why is earth and ashes proud? There is not a more wicked thing than a covetous man. And who's more covetous than Esau, man? Okay? And his grandson Amalek, man. They are some covetous people, man. You know, they want that money and they want that power and they want ultimate control, man. Okay? And they covet after these things, man. Through people dying, you know, uh, families being broken up, what have you, man. You know, murder, people being murdered, right? People being sacrificed, people being kidnapped, people been, being sold for uh, for sex, you know? And many other wicked things, man, that these people are doing on the earth, man. But why is earth and ashes proud? There is not a more wicked thing than a covetous man for such as one set of his own soul to sell because he liveth. Because while he liveth, he casteth away his bowels, man. You know, these people have no reason to be proud. No one on the on the earth has a reason to be proud at all, man. Okay? No one has a reason to be proud, man. Let me get Isaiah. Uh, let's get 10. Isaiah 10. Isaiah 10. And uh, let's get 13. Uh, through 15, it says, For he saith, By the strength of my hand, I have done it, and by my wisdom, for I am prudent, and I have removed the bond, the bounds of the people, and have robbed their treasures, and I have put down the inhabitants like a valiant man. You know, and this is what Esau uh, really, uh, you know, his his head is, is, is pretty much blown up because, you know, he's done all these things on the earth where he's robbed people, you know, for their treasures. You know, he thinks he's the smartest man in the world, right? And he feels like he's a valiant man, right? But that's not that's not being valiant as far as, you know, taking people out that pretty much can't fight back against you, man, okay? Those are cowardly acts. And there's nothing valiant about the acts of Esau and Amalek, man. And it says, in my hand have found as a nest the riches of the people, And it says, in my hand have found as a nest the riches of the people, and as one gathereth eggs that are left, have I gathered all the earth, and there was none that moved the wing, or opened the mouth, or peeped. 
And it says, shall the axe boast itself against him that he was there with. Okay? So it's the Heavenly Father that's making them uh, do the things that they're doing. But they think it's uh, the doing of their own hands and their own might. But unbeknownst to them, it's the Heavenly Father that's setting them up on the left-hand side to make them think uh, that they are the ones that are doing it on their own, man. So they can boast, boast themselves and ultimately, you know, be taken out, man, which is going to happen. You know, and you can imagine their faces, you know, when this time comes, when they're uh, when they're taken down, man, when their kingdom is or queendom is taken from them, man. Shall the axe boast itself against him that he was there with or shall the sword magnify itself against him that shake it as if the rod should shake itself against them that lift it up or as if the staff should lift its uh, lift up itself as it. Where no wood, man. Okay? So these people just straight up uh, boast themselves, man. You know? For no apparent reason. And this is uh, Psalms uh, 17 and 8 through 12. And it says, Keep me as the apple of the eye. Hide me under the shadow of thy wings. From the wicked that oppress me. From my deadly enemies who can pass me about. And it says, They are enclosed in their own fat. With their mouth they speak proudly. They have now compassed us in our steps. They have set their eyes bowing down to the earth. Like as a lion that is greedy of his prey and as it were a young lion lurking in secret places, man. You know, and that's what they seek to do, man. They seek to uh, take down whoever they can, man, for, for greed of want, man. You know, and, you know, these people are about to be taken down, man, you know. And we see it, we see it coming, man. We see the Heavenly Father uh, taking them out in a great way, man. You know, and we ain't going to have to see them boasting themselves anymore or us walking around acting innocent, you know. These people, man, I'm telling you. I used to live in uh, Rockland, uh, Rockland County in Spring Valley, and Amalek is all up in, all through there, man. Muncie, you know, uh, Spring Valley, you know, Nyack, you know, in those places, man. You know, Nanuet. Uh, yeah, I lived there for a couple of years. So they will have these large communities, man. They got their own schools, right? Their own buses, uh, you know, their own cabs, their own communities. Like I said earlier, they got their own communities. And if you happen to walk through one of their communities, right, and, you know, they're outside in their lawn or whatever, right, it's weird because it's like, you know, you know what it's like? It's like in, in uh, the movie Get uh, Get Out, right? When uh, the dude was downstairs and, you know, all the white people was there talking to him, right? And then he went upstairs to go get his camera. And as soon as he went upstairs, everyone in the party got quiet. It's the same thing, man. You're walking through them. You, walk, you, you know, you're walking to where you got to go. And, they, you know, they could be playing. They could be doing whatever. And everyone just stops and stares at you, man. You know, these people are super, super weird, man. And the craziest thing about their communities is they, their communities have the weirdest smell, man. You know, being outside, you know, it's just got the weirdest smell, man. You know? So you know them them demons are inhabiting them people, man. They got a, a super weird smell, man. It's hard to explain, man. But the air is funky around them, man. You know, that's the best way I could say. But, you know, through all of these things, we know... That ultimately, you know, they are going to into uh, captivity, man. Which I'm going to bring up here, and I'm going to end the lesson here, man. You know, because I'm sick of of, of of Amalek acting like they are harmless. You know, they do no one any harm, but they do the most harm, man. You know, and it says uh, Numbers 24, 18, and 20, and Edom shall be a possession, right? Seir also shall be a possession for his enemies, and Israel shall do valiantly. And out of Jacob shall come he that shall have dominion and shall destroy him that remaineth of the city. And when he looked on Amalek, he took up his parable and said Amalek was the first of the nations, but his latter end shall be that he perish forever. Right. There's Amalek and Esau, man, together are going to perish, uh, perish uh, forever, man. Obadiah 1 and 18, man. You know, so, yeah, I just want to do a, a quick lesson on that. Uh, Lord willing, it was uh, edifying. I, I kept getting, uh, 
you know, disturbed, you know, by people in my household. So I had to pause it. So, uh, Salakia for that. But once again, Lord willing, this lesson was edifying. Kyle Halal Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, Barakatha, Barakatham, Shalom.